In this video, we're going to be looking at the unique outfits and comic-inspired recolors of both Black Widow and Winter Soldier in Marvel's Avengers. If this is something you're interested in, then check out the videos I've made on the other characters in Avengers and subscribe so you don't miss out when I get to the remaining characters. Before we start though, I have to admit my biases. I do not care for Black Widow. At all. Her visual design, her abilities and tools, her personality, her backstory, her gameplay here in Avengers, none of it interests me. I find her to be incredibly boring and generic. Femme Fatale wearing black and using pistols is such a generic set of characteristics that it could describe a million other characters. So let me be clear and fully explain myself here, because when I said I wasn't a fan of the Jane Thor character, I had a lot of people commenting saying, I can't believe you hate my favorite character! Even though I didn't say that, not liking a character is not the same as disliking them. Here's a visual aid so you can see what I'm talking about. As you can see, I basically divide characters into three groups. Characters I like, characters I don't care for, and characters I dislike. So when I say I don't like a character, or that I'm not a fan of them, really what I'm saying is that I don't care about them one way or the other. If I truly dislike a character, if I hate them, trust me, you will know. My language will be a lot more colorful when I talk about them. I feel like I have to say this to start with so that you know where I'm coming from when I discuss and rank these outfits. I'm just not a Black Widow fan, so I may not have the best perspective when it comes to analyzing her outfits. Spoiler alert, but I don't think Widow really has any good costumes. But I've also never really liked her that much as a character, so... In the description, there will be links to tier lists for both Black Widow and Winter Soldier's costumes. So if you disagree with me, that's fine. You can use the tier list I've linked to make your own rankings. Now if all that said, let's start. Black Widow's iconic suit is a pretty good translation of her main look from the comics. She has the gold wrist, stinger, grapple hook, weapon thingies, which is something that the MCU didn't do until the character's final appearance, and she has the gold circle belt thingies she had in the comics, which is something the MCU never even attempted. Her hair isn't super red, because more realism, but I guess it's fine enough. The design of her bodysuit is fine, it's black, it's a bodysuit, what more could you ask for really? I do like the little red area on the boots, adds a little bit of color. Overall, this is a decent look for Black Widow. I'd give it a 7 because it's perfectly acceptable. Doesn't do anything that wows me, doesn't have any major errors, it's just okay. The tactical outfit is Black Widow's default outfit in this game. It's just a black turtleneck and black pants. There's nothing technically wrong with this outfit, it's just very boring. 5 out of 10. The Shade Strike outfit is an adaptation of one of Black Widow's looks from the 1990s. The red stripes on the side of the torso are the most distinct part of the suit, and they kept it here but they didn't put them on the back of the outfit, which is somewhat understandable since this costume was drawn inconsistently in the comics, sometimes not having the design on the back either. Overall, it's fine. Another bodysuit for Widow, this time with red lines. Yay. 6 out of 10. The gray suit is based off of Widow's main appearance from the 1980s. Fun fact, this outfit actually first debuted in an issue of Daredevil. The costume in the comics was really nothing special, but this game's adaptation of it is awful. First, there's the fact that this is literally just the Shade Strike costume that's been recolored, with the only unique additions being the hairpiece and opened collar. But the bigger issue is what they've done with the spider symbols that were on the costume. In the books, this suit had a small spider symbol on Widow's right breast, and a large one on her back. Both of these symbols have been removed here, traded in for one small symbol on her right shoulder. This is the kind of design that made me fall in hate with this game's design philosophy as a whole. The kind of nonsensical design changes that are both incredibly lazy and disrespectful to the original artwork of the comics. Keep in mind, I don't really care about this costume, but this still pisses me off. I truly do not believe that Crystal Dynamics made this outfit in good faith. I do not believe they adapted the suit this way because they honestly thought it would look better. I think this outfit is a result of sheer laziness and apathy. I'd give this one a 2 out of 10. I also wish her hair had more volume to it, like it sometimes did in the comics. The Classic Stealth Outfit is a direct adaptation of Widow's classic appearance in the comics. It's not a one-to-one -one adaptation of the suit in the comics, there are differences, and I'm not saying it needed to be one-to-one, -one. I've just seen a lot of people say that it is, but it's not. Personally, these differences don't matter a whole lot to me, I just think they're worth pointing out. The material is rendered more realistically here. See, in the comics, this outfit is usually drawn as if it was painted onto Widow's body, giving it a tight and form-fitting appearance that is not present here. 
Additionally, this suit is usually drawn like a one-piece bodysuit with no points of separation, but this one has separate boots and gold seam lines that break up the outfit. Her hair isn't as long as it typically is in the comics, due most likely to graphical limitations. And the final thing to note is that Widow in the comic books has more, let's say, prominent physical features that are significantly toned down here. Again, none of these are that big of a deal for me. The outfit is just alright. I've never thought Black Widow's black hat suit has ever been that interesting of an outfit, so I don't really care. 7 out of 10. Also worth pointing out that there isn't a version of this with the zipper zipped all the way up, as it often was in the comics. There's a recolor of this called Silent Fate that is pretty much the same thing with toned down colors. So if you want the outfit to look even duller than it already was, here you go. Widow's Origin is a white recolor that is a reference to a white outfit she wore in the comics. You might think that since it's called Widow's Origin, and that it's from a story called Deadly Origin, that this is her original costume, but that's not the case. Just like in the Black Widow movie, this is essentially just a snowsuit she wore because she was doing a mission in a snowy area. That's all. It's also a 7 out of 10. Another recolor of this outfit is called Fear Itself. This is a reference to the Fear Itself storyline. Essentially, Odin's evil long-lost brother, god that is such a tired trope, gives a bunch of villains and a few heroes these magic hammers that boost their power and make them eviler. So in order to fight back, Iron Man has several weapons made from Uru and enchanted by Odin to be used by several Avengers. These weapons then magically change the character's appearance as well. The weapons Widow received are these two swords, and they caused her outfit to have all these lights on it. So despite the fact that this was a very short-lived look that only appeared for like three panels, there's a lot of cool backstory in here, and I think the look itself is kind of neat. This costume in the game, though, is an astoundingly lazy recolor. They just drew some lines on her outfit and were like, well, let's color her hair white too so it looks a little more distinct, and then called it a day. If they had put in effort, this could have been really cool. Imagine this. Widow has these battens she uses in combat, and she puts them on her belt here, right? So imagine if instead, they modeled the swords from the comics, and had them be her batten things on this costume. Sure, you'd have to make a new animation for her putting the swords away. Sure, it'd look a little weird for these swords to be used as battens and not swords. Sure, her ultimate ability is a wrench here, since she merges her battens into a staff for that. But, I think you could make this work if you really tried. But doing even a fraction of what I said would take far more effort than Crystal Dynamics ever put into anything in this game. As an adaptation, I'm giving this outfit a 1. The lines don't even glow. As its own thing, it's maybe a 5? There's a grey recolor of this suit called Oxide Heart. It isn't a reference to anything in the comics, at least I don't think so. But I wanted to acknowledge it because it has a huge spider logo on the back. Wrong grey suit, Crystal! The Super Spy outfit is based off the Yelena Belova character. I'm pretty sure the goggle face mask thing Yelena has in the comics is more for artistic reasons than practical ones. It's pretty much just there so she's not a blonde version of Natasha, though they don't really draw her with it anymore. This version of the suit in the game is just okay. It's mostly there, the goggles are a little different I guess since they're a more realistic design, but it's fine. Another black bodysuit really. 6 out of 10. The Stark Tech suit is a typical Black Widow bodysuit, but this time with Iron Man stuff stapled onto it. This costume actually made me realize something. For a while, I've been referring to all the characters' Stark Tech suits as the iconic suits with Iron Man stuff on top of it. But after looking at this one, I re-examined the Stark Tech suits and I realized that the only ones that were built off the iconic suits were the ones for Cap and Thor. Iron Man and Hulk's are different enough to qualify as unique suits. Kamala's is built off her advanced suit, and Widow's here is built off the Super Spy outfit, or the Shade Strike outfit. I don't know which one came first. With that clarification aside, I don't like this one. It's mostly just another black bodysuit, but with metal on it. And I found her eyewear thing to be silly, and the lights on the chest and thighs remind me of an airport runway, and I don't think that looks good. I'd give it a 4 out of 10. The Agent outfit is an original design that is another bodysuit, this time with a waistband. Wowie. The waist belt thingy she has has a holster on it, but it's empty, she doesn't actually have a gun in there. Odd. 6 out of 10. The Security outfit is an original outfit that I think is really silly. I get that this is supposed to be like a shield security guard outfit since it has a shield logo on it, but it looks like she's a mall cop or a park ranger. It's a very mundane outfit. And before anyone tries to justify it and say, oh, but it's a disguise, it's supposed to look boring. Well, she has a name tag with Romanoff written on it. So yeah, great disguise, Widow. Four out of 10, why is this even here? Up next, we have the codename outfits. 
I can't tell which one is supposed to be the original suit and which ones are the recolors, so that's why I'm calling them the codename outfits and not highlighting any of them in specific. This one sucks. And let me explain what I mean when I say that. It's not that this outfit is ugly. The issue is that this is so boring. It's not even a design, this is just a normal coat. And I know some people will defend it saying, is a disguise, it's supposed to be inconspicuous. Well, yeah, great, mission accomplished. It's such a good disguise that I'm forgetting the outfit already. Four out of 10. Something interesting about this outfit though is that there's a version named Codename Natalie that is unobtainable. I found this image of it online from earlier in the game's life, yet when I looked through my suit selection screen, it was nowhere to be found. After asking about it on Twitter, Twitter user Lorem Ipsum Delore provided a screenshot showing that they had the suit, but its hair was changed to blonde. That made me double check to see if I had missed it, but nope, it's not there. So my theory is that this codename Natalie outfit was one of the recolors they removed a while back when they randomly decided to purge most of their cosmetics. While it looks like they had reinstated all of them in the final update in March, this one seems to have been left out. So if you had it before the recolor purge, you can still use it, but if you don't, then it doesn't even appear in game. At least, that's my theory. The Heartbreaker skin is a reference to a cover depicting a moment between Widow and Winter Soldier. This might come as a bit of a shock to people who have only seen the movies, but Widow and Winter Soldier were actually a couple in the comics. It's a neat reference, but I don't really like this one. It's just a tank top and jeans. Spoiler alert, I guess, but Winter Soldier himself doesn't have a matching skin, so you can't actually recreate this image. 5 out of 10. The Dustwalker skin is another more casual outfit, this one sporting a leather jacket and hoodie. At this point, you can probably guess what I think about this one. I don't like it. I'm sorry, but these are just normal clothes. How is this supposed to be exciting? If you're a fan of this outfit and the casual skins in general, please let me know in the comments. Tell me why you like these outfits because I just don't get it. This is boring to me, especially the hairstyle. I understand that making hair in video games is hard, but did they really have to give her this granny bun? That's not me being insulting. If you Google granny bun, this is the hairstyle that pops up. But apparently the devs liked this hairstyle a ton since they reused it for Kate Bishop. Five out of 10. The Widow 1998 skin is based off an alternate universe version of Widow that appeared very briefly in the comic Mutant X. The heroes of this universe mostly seem to be combinations of two different characters. For example, Iron Man and Giant Man are mixed together to make Iron Giant Man. Widow here is mixed in with Spider-Man as the red parts of her boots and wrist area have a web pattern on them. This version of the suit in the game doesn't have that though, it's mostly just a recolor shade strike with different hair and an earpiece. An earpiece they managed to overdesign, by the way, just can't help themselves I guess. I think the red and gold areas are too saturated and ill-fitting with the rest of the outfit. I personally would never use this, 4 out of 10. The Infiltrator outfit is another Black Widow bodysuit, but this one has rolled up sleeves. Oh wow. It's not bad, I actually like the rolled up sleeves, but it doesn't exactly excite me. 7 out of 10. The saboteur outfit is a recolor of this one that is meant to look like a shield uniform. Not super special, but I do think it's a little fun. The outrider skin is a modified version of infiltrator that adds a pair of sunglasses. You might think that the top is new, but it's the same. Just textured and colored differently, that's all. This one's okay. Gives me a bit of an Indiana Jones vibe. 7 out of 10. The Liquidator suit is just the Infiltrator one, but with goggles and no sleeves. The added red is kinda cool, I guess, but not enough to get me to budge. 6 out of 10. The Sunny Days outfit is a fun, swimwear themed skin. I originally had a much more depraved section written here, but my mom watches these, so I'm not gonna say any of that. Instead, I will say that as far as swimsuits go, this one is relatively conservative as there's no visible cleavage. When it comes to Widow's physique, her arms are actually more muscular here than they are in her other skins where her arms are exposed. The outfit itself is fine. I think it's fun, it's something different, but I don't think it's great. I'd personally give it a 7 out of 10. Also, I noticed a pretty consistent bug with this skin where her pistol remains in the holster after she draws it. As far as I know, this is the only skin that has this issue. The hooded outfit is a near-perfect recreation of a more modern Black Widow design. Really the only difference are these additional white lines on the lower body. But aside from that, this is a fantastic translation of this suit from the comics. In my opinion, this is Widow's best costume. It's the one I have on her and I don't think that's ever going to change. While it is another black bodysuit, this one has additional features that make it stand out more. She has different hair, the red lines on the suit look good, and the hood gives me a Sith Lord vibe that I think is cool. I'd give this one an 8 out of 10. It doesn't knock my socks off, but it is good. 
Widow's Endgame outfit was the very first MCU outfit added to this game, and it shows. In the Endgame movie, Widow had a very specific hairstyle. She had a large braid with a bit of blonde hair at the end, showing the remnants of her time on the run seen in Infinity War. But they didn't put that in here, instead she has her standard hairstyle. Also in this suit, as well as a few of the other MCU suits for Widow, she has battens in this little backpack here. But she doesn't actually pull her battens out from this pack. Instead, she uses her default battens, and these backpack ones are entirely cosmetic. Another oddity this skin and many of the MCU skins have for Widow is the boots. Most of Widow's MCU suits have these wedges built into the boots. Scarlett Johansson is only 5'3", so they put these wedges into her boots so that she isn't completely dwarfed by the other cast members. The issue brought by the wedges is minor, it's something I don't care for, and you probably won't even notice it even after I point this out. See, the wedges added to these costumes don't increase Widow's height, so if you look at it, you'll notice that Widow's legs have essentially been shortened in these MCU costumes to make room for the wedges. Again, this is not a huge issue, but I have seen other people on the Play Avengers subreddit bring it up, so there are some people that are bothered by this. Finally, the last interesting thing I want to talk about is the time travel watch band thing. The design of the watch is not the same one that was used in the movie. Instead, this is the original design of the watch that was used when they filmed it. The final film replaces the physical watch the actors wore with a CGI version that has a different design. I don't have a preference for either version, but I thought it was interesting enough to point out. The outfit itself is fine, it's another black bodysuit, but I think it is hampered by a lot of Crystal Dynamics' general laziness. 7 out of 10. They later released another version of this suit that includes the braid. However, it doesn't have the blonde section at the end because this hairpiece is the exact same one from the Black Widow solo movie outfit that has been reused here with no changes. 7 out of 10. Black Widow's outfit from Infinity War does nothing for me. Another black bodysuit, but this one has a green vest and blonde hair. Yawn. 5 out of 10. Widow's suit from Age of Ultron is a special case. For whatever reason, Crystal Dynamics decided to brighten the color of her hair and red wrist pieces. In addition to being inaccurate to the film, this change makes the outfit look incredibly odd. Maybe they thought it would fit better with the bright blue LED lights? But I think it distracts too much from the blue lines, so they're no longer the most important part of the costume. The suit itself is fine, I think the back is really bland because the blue lines are only barely present there. But I think the costume was poorly adapted and that brings it down. 5 out of 10. There are two suits from the Black Widow solo movie, her white snowsuit and her black outfit she wears towards the end, that this game refers to as her hero suit. In terms of design, both suits are pretty similar. Not exact, as you can see differences in the lining if you look closely, but they're pretty much the same thing. The snowsuit is decent, I think it's better than the white recolor of the classic suit. It adds enough detail to make the suit look more practical without going overboard. I'd give it a 7. The hero suit I'm not the biggest fan of. I think they did too much with the different lines and piping on the suit. Some parts of it are gray, some are black. I don't know, it's just too much for me. Personally, I'd say it's overdesigned. I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Widow's suit from the 2012 Avengers movie was one of the last costumes added into the game. As a consequence, there is a noticeable increase in quality for the skin. Her hairpiece is somewhat unique, being a shortened version of her iconic hairstyle. I know that sounds like an inconsequential thing to mention, but this is the only skin in the game that has this hairstyle. The bigger and more noticeable difference is her guns. When they're in the holsters, her pistols are actually a different model than the ones used for all the other outfits. However, once she pulls them out, they return to the default models. Something they screwed up though was the seam lines of the costume. In the movie, the lines are black, so they blend into the black costume and you don't really see them much. Here in the game, the lines are prominently gray and are impossible not to notice, even at a distance. 7 out of 10. This is a decent baseline appearance for Black Widow, which means that as far as I'm concerned, it's nothing special. And that's all of Black Widow's costumes in this game. Outside of her hooded skin, which is a little more unique, I'd say that Widow has an incredibly underwhelming selection of costumes. She essentially only has two types of outfits, variations on her typical black bodysuit, and normal clothes. Neither of these are aesthetic that interest me. Like I said before, I have a tier list of all these suits in the description. Here's what mine looks like, and don't be afraid to create your own. When it comes to suggesting costumes, I find it difficult because Black Widow isn't a character I care much about. That being said, I do have suggestions. Three of them, to be exact. Number one, original. Black Widow's original costume was a very silly and impractical outfit that was very much a product of its time. Despite, or maybe even because of, its silly appearance, it's a very distinct outfit that I think would have been fun to have. Number two, mech suit. 
Black Widow has had at least two different mech suits in the comics. In the 2018 Jason Aaron Avengers run, she wore a mech suit called War Widow, and in the Ultimates, she wore what was essentially a black version of Iron Man suit. Either one of these would have been a good addition, as a fully armored look would be unlike anything Widow has. They also wouldn't have to model hair for it. Number 3, a fancy dress. Widow has worn a ton of dresses before, so why not put one in here? It fits the whole spy thing she has going on, and would be something different. Mostly, I would want something creative and unique, something that's different from Widow's typical appearance, since I find that to be pretty boring. So that brings us to the second part of this video, Winter Soldier, aka James Buchanan Barnes, aka Bucky. You probably noticed when I categorized the characters in the start of the video, that Winter Soldier was in the I don't care section, and yeah, I don't really like Winter Soldier that much. I think he looks cool and his backstory is interesting, but in terms of gameplay, he's just a guy with a gun. Everything he does in this game could be accomplished by a shield agent with a couple of gadgets. I understand that the whole reason he's even here is because he was easy to make. A good chunk of his moveset is reused from other characters, so I get it. But there are around 10 billion other characters I would want instead of him. So I'm going to do something a little different. Usually I start with the iconic suit, since that's the character's canon appearance within this game's world. But this time I'm going to start with Winter Soldier's MCU outfit. The reason being that this is his best suit. By far. And I think it would be best to look at this suit and examine why it works, so that it'll be easier to see where the other suits falter. The suit from Captain America the Winter Soldier is a fantastic costume. It's a good adaptation of the character's look from the comic books, but it's also just a good design. There are three different versions of this outfit here, one with the goggles and face mask, one of grease paint and face mask, and one where his face is completely uncovered. I think the goggle and face mask version is the best, grease paint is second, and the uncovered one is the worst. My reasoning is very simple. Winter Soldier isn't really a good looking guy. He's not ugly, and the issue is not that he doesn't look like the actor from the films. The issue is that his face is so... meh? Like I keep saying in these videos, the art style and character design of this game is striving to be as realistic as possible, and I think they consistently succeed in this goal. I believe that if I went to Walmart right now, I could find someone who looks like this. The problem is that this doesn't mean the character is well designed or visually appealing. So I prefer to keep his face covered as much as possible. I'm not kidding when I say that a lot of his other suits go down a few points for me, just because I can see his face. Anyway, getting back to the costume, the face mask and goggles he wears here are very intimidating. They give away nothing about him, it's like staring into a black void. I wouldn't be surprised if the costume designers for this film took inspiration from the Predator character, since the mask is pretty similar. And I like the idea of the grease paint around his eyes. It's a clever way to emulate the domino mask he had in the comics, while still keeping the design grounded in reality. The design of the clothes he wears is great too. It's really form-fitting, so he has a sleek and slick appearance. On his chest are a ton of buttons, reminiscent of Bucky's original outfit, both in the first Captain America movie, and his original design from the comic books. The straps on his chest are similar to some designs he's had in the comics, but personally they remind me of the straps of a straitjacket. It's almost like a visual indicator that the Winter Soldier is a prisoner within his own mind, an unwilling participant in the atrocities he commits. And the character's most defining physical characteristic, his metal arm, looks great. The only thing I really take issue with here is that he has a glove on his metal hand, but not his flesh one? Wouldn't that be the one you'd want to protect more? Maybe they wanted to make it clear to the audience that only one of his arms was mechanical. Still, that looks odd. I'll give the suit a 9 out of 10. It's a great looking costume. The only issue I have with it is the glove thing. If he just had a glove on his normal hand, then it'd be perfect. Now we'll progress normally through his remaining costumes, starting with the iconic suit. Since this is supposed to be Winter Soldier's main costume, it's pretty similar to his appearance in the Winter Soldier movie, since that's what Winter Soldier looks like. So while they both have the same general idea, I think this one is a lot worse. The entire outfit is comprised of fairly standard tactical gear, which fits the character, he literally has Soldier in his name. Though it is fitting, I personally think it's a less interesting and more generic aesthetic. He has pouches on his abdomen, which makes sense for him because he uses a gun, so he would actually put things in there, unlike a certain someone whose pouches are completely impractical. 
That being said, you can clearly see that these pouches are way too small to actually house the magazines used by his rifle. The design of his metal arm is alright, it's more mechanical than the one in the MCU. The MCU arm is essentially just a metal sleeve, because that's what it is. It was a metal sleeve the actor wore that was touched up with CGI later. With this one, it looks more like a piece of machinery covered with solid metal plates. I don't have a preference for either arm, I think they both look cool. The main issue I have with this outfit is that it's too colorful. All the bright red throughout it clashes with the idea that it's supposed to be legitimate military gear because real military gear doesn't have these bright colors, so it instead looks like Nerf gear or something similar. I think something like this would fit better into a game with a more stylized and vibrant art style like Ultimate Alliance 3 or Midnight Suns, but here, where everything is trying to look super realistic, it doesn't really fit. I think it would be a lot better if all the red on the chest piece and pants was removed. It should really only be on his shirt and gloves, and even then I think it should be toned down and less saturated. It's an alright outfit, but it gets mogged easily by the MCU suit. 6 out of 10. The only thing this suit does better than the MCU one is that he has gloves on both hands. There's a version of the iconic suit that has a domino mask on it, as Winter Soldier often does in the comics. There's a reason why the MCU never adapted the domino mask. It's really silly. Surprise, surprise, it looks silly here too. Winter Soldier sometimes has a more sharp and angular mask in the comics, but they wanted the standard, more rounded one here. I don't care for either, just pointing it out for the record. 6 out of 10. I do think the mask looks silly, but it does cover more of his face, so it's kind of an even trade. Deep Cover is the default suit for Winter Soldier. It's a casual outfit that is supposed to be a discreet disguise. Except he has his metal hand fully exposed. Yeah, great disguise, pal. This is similar to the outfit Winter Soldier wore in Captain America Civil War when he was hiding, except there, Bucky was smart enough to wear gloves on both hands. The outfit itself is fine, as far as their casual outfits go, it's not bad. 6 out of 10. Furlough is another casual outfit, this one being a t-shirt and jeans. I couldn't be bothered to check if this was a reference to something from the books because I legitimately don't care. I mean, come on, it's a t-shirt and jeans. Does it really matter? His metal arm has a different design here, being cleaner and more heroic looking. So that's neat, I guess. What really interests me is his hair. It's the same hair piece Captain America has, but that's not what I'm referring to. It's a dark blondish color, not dark brown or black like in his other skins. Winter Soldier has a few other skins with his short hair, and they're the same color as this one. So what's the deal? Does he dye his hair when he's Winter Soldier? Or is he dyeing it here when it's short? Why didn't they just make his hair the same color? Did they recolor it incorrectly when they copy and pasted this hairstyle from Captain America? Who knows? This one's a 5. The White Wolf outfit is not something Bucky ever wore in the comics. The name has only ever been associated with him in the movies. So this outfit is loosely inspired by that idea. To me, this one's pretty dull. It's a pretty standard military getup. This is another 6 as far as I'm concerned. The codename Winter Soldier outfit is taken from this one page showing the process by which Bucky was brainwashed and became the Winter Soldier. This one's okay. It sort of reminds me of the helmet Wolverine wore when he was a part of the Weapon X program. I like the details on the arm, really sells that this is an incomplete prototype version of it. As a whole though, I don't love it. These raggedy, in-progress looks for characters aren't really my thing. I prefer cleaner and more pristine outfits. And what I find to be a really bizarre choice of this skin is his shoes. These are just normal Vans? Why is he wearing these? Were the Russians like, okay, we're gonna torture you, brainwash you, and make the rest of your life a living hell, but we'll make sure your feet are comfy, like, <laughs> what? Don't you think that's a little odd? He really should just be wearing normal combat boots instead, I think it would be less jarring that way. Overall, the suit's a 7 out of 10. Something else I noticed was that in the blog post showing off all the costumes for Winter Soldier, this one was erroneously called the Experiment skin. But the picture on the blog post that I downloaded and used in the video was correctly labeled as Codename Winter Soldier, so that's odd. The Gulag skin is inspired by a time when Winter Soldier was imprisoned. As such, it's a prison uniform. I think this is kinda crummy looking, I mean it's literally just a prison uniform. Like I get that Winter Soldier hasn't had a huge amount of alternate looks in the comics, but this one screams bottom of the barrel to me. 5 out of 10. There's a recolor of this called Wanted that is a more contemporary orange prison suit with the word Raft printed on it. The Raft is a super prison in the Marvel Universe. I just wanted to point out that little reference there. The Howling Commando skin is an original skin. You have to keep in mind that in the comics, Bucky was younger than Steve and was his kid sidekick. 
so he wasn't really a soldier, he took on the Bucky sidekick identity pretty quickly, unlike the film version who was a soldier and fought alongside Steve. I don't think Bucky actually wore a military uniform in the comics during World War II. Additionally, comic Bucky wasn't a part of the Howling Commandos team, though his film counterpart was. So really, this outfit is more inspired by the continuity of the movies than that of the comics. This outfit is a World War II inspired outfit, so that's neat, I suppose. I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Not my thing, but if you're a history buff, then maybe this will do something for you. The Bucky outfit is based on the original outfit Bucky wore in World War II as Captain America's sidekick. I know for a fact that, for all the characters I've covered in this game on this channel, this is the only costume adapted from the comic books that looks significantly better here than it did in the comics. Though I honestly think that applies to all the characters in the game, but I'd need to refresh my memory with the others to be sure. It's really quite simple, this suit adapts the look from the comic in a way that keeps the core design the same, changing things only when needed in order to have the costume fit better into a realistic environment. The materials being changed from spandex to leather, and the removal of the blue leotard that highlighted his bulge, are the biggest improvements. If every comic-based costume in this game was adapted the way this one was, then I would never have made any of these videos. And if I had, they would have had a drastically different and far more positive tone. That being said, I don't personally like this costume that much. I wasn't born in the 1940s, so I don't have any love or nostalgia for the original Bucky outfit. I'd give it an 8. It's not something I'm personally interested in, but I do respect it. Also, something that isn't a knock against the skin, but still something I find interesting, is the symbol on his shoulder. It's Captain America's shield, specifically, the design of the shield that is unique to this game. Now, you might not see why this is a problem, but the thing is that there is a lore explanation for Cap's shield design in this game. The shield Cap has is a recent development, made shortly before the 8 day scenario with the help of Black Panther's sister, Shuri. There's even an infographic about it in the 8 day stage, and there are audio logs further expanding upon this. So why does Bucky's outfit from the 1940s have the logo of Cap's shield that was built in the present day. And you might say this suit isn't canon, and I wish that were the case, but it is canon. In Winter Soldier's motion comic intro cutscene that cheaply explains what he's been up to, they show that he did wear the suit during World War II. Even more, they show that Cap had the same shield design back then. So which is it, Crystal? Is this a new shield design or not? It's this kind of thing that makes it impossible for me to take this game's lore and story seriously. The Earth's Protector outfit is based off Winter Soldier's time as the Man on the Wall. Essentially, the Man on the Wall is a secret guardian that kills monstrosities headed towards Earth before they become major threats. Nick Fury was the Man on the Wall, but after his death, the role was passed on to Bucky, a role he didn't seem to keep long since this is literally the only image I found of him wearing it in the comic books. I don't like how this suit looked in the comics, it was essentially his normal outfit with a few pieces of space armor on it. In this game, the design has been changed to resemble the spacesuits of Russian cosmonauts, and I just don't like the design. It's too bulky and old looking. Not old in a cool retro throwback way, but more in an outdated, thank god we don't use stuff that looks like this anymore kind of way. 4 out of 10. There's a recolor of this called Major Bucky that is not a reference to anything, but I still want to bring it up because I actually really like this one. Changing the helmet to be a fully reflective visor instantly shoots the costume up for me. Since his face is completely covered, I can pretend I'm playing as a cool space marine instead of this lame-o. It's very silly looking, but it kind of wraps around to being cool. I'm not kidding, I like this outfit so much I actually started playing as Winter Soldier just to use this suit. 9 out of 10. I've saved the worst for last with the Who the Hell is Bucky outfit. This is their attempt at adapting Bucky's first appearance as the Winter Soldier, when he was still firmly under the control of his Winter Soldier mental programming. You can tell because they gave him the silly little hose connected to his arm, as that is practically the only bit of this outfit that is reminiscent of its comic counterpart. There's so much I don't like about this, where do I even start? The cord attached to his arm has always looked dumb, that's why they got rid of it pretty quickly in the comics, and never adapted it into the movies. But here, not only do they have it, but they hooked it up to this backpack. This backpack they added gives the suit more bulk to it, and I think it's even sillier than what was in the comics. Also his arm has gold pieces on it? Why? The chest design is close to the design in the books, but you can barely see it because it's covered by all this unnecessary junk they strapped to his chest. And if this is supposed to be his outfit for when he was a villain, why is it so colorful? But then we get to the worst part, the mask. This is basically a standard paintball mask. He's supposed to be a super assassin. Why is he wearing a paintball mask? 
especially since this costume is named after the moment Captain America realizes that the Winter Soldier is Bucky, a moment that is entirely dependent on being able to see his face. So why does he have a paintball mask that covers his entire face? This outfit, it just, it, it doesn't make any sense. This is why I wanted to do the MCU one first, so you could see why that suit worked and why this one really doesn't. They're both based off the same thing, but they're adapted in very different ways. And I think this shows that it's not about sticking to the comic books as closely as possible. Both of these outfits make changes, but one of them does so in a way that works, and the other one doesn't. One of them looks like a uniquely designed supervillain outfit, the other looks like budget cosplay a person could put together over the course of a weekend. This is a 1 out of 10. The only reason I'm not giving it a 0 is that maybe there's a person out there who likes the cord attached to the arm. That's the only thing about this costume that might make it worth it for someone, but outside of that, I see no reason for anyone to ever use this costume. And that's all of Winter Soldier's costumes. Winter Soldier's outfits are generally underwhelming, especially because he was the last playable character to be added into the game. Starting with Black Panther, there was a noticeable difference in how the developers approached alternate costumes, a shift towards more outwardly heroic designs, and less of the average guy in paintball gear type of stuff that the older characters had. This shift can be felt with Spider-Man and culminates with Jane who I still maintain has the best overall costumes in this game. Winter Soldier, however, is more in line with the older characters, and as such, he is a drastic step down from Jane, and an incredibly disappointing character release to end the game on. Like I said before, I have a tier list of all these suits in the description. Here's what mine looks like. You might notice that the Gulag skin picture in the tier list is different than all the other ones. That's because I don't actually own that skin. It's the only one I don't own of these original skins. Because it's, at least as far as I'm concerned, legitimately unobtainable. See, it's in the cosmetic vendor, which has a rotating list of items that changes every day, but I did the time travel glitch where you change the system clock to a different date. I did that for like three months, essentially, of time to try and see if the skin would pop up for me, and it never did. More than that though, I know for a fact there are several recolors Winter Soldier has that they added in recently that are also unobtainable, because they do not show up in the cosmetic vendor. Since I don't really care that much about Winter Soldier, I don't have many costumes I wanted to see. The only one I really wanted was from the Winter Soldier movie, and I got it. So really what I have instead are outfits I'm surprised he didn't have. Number 1. Heroic Suit After the Winter Soldier mental programming is largely removed from Bucky, he cuts his hair short and wears a slightly more heroic version of the Winter Soldier outfit, complete with a different star on his arm, this one being a white star inside a blue circle. For a decent amount of time in the comic books, this was Winter Soldier's main look, and it's not in the game. This arm and star design actually are in the game though, it's just that it's only on the t-shirt skin, and even then the star logo is partially covered by the shirt. Number 2, Captain America. Bucky did briefly take on the mantle of Captain America in the comics, and he had his own distinct costume design. I'm actually not a fan of this look. Alex Ross loves to put shiny fabric on a lot of his designs, and it works sometimes, doesn't work other times. For me, this is one of those cases where it doesn't work. I don't know, I think it's just a silly looking costume. But it is Bucky's most distinct alternate look, so I was shocked that they didn't add it. Especially since there's an emote where Bucky catches the shield, so that would have paired really well with the Captain America skin. Number 3, MCU Wakandan Arm. The black and gold arm Bucky gets in the MCU was very different than most of his other arm designs. I'm surprised they didn't include his Infinity War or Falcon and the Winter Soldier outfits that included this arm, since they really would have stood out. And that's all. This concludes our look at the most boring duo in the game. Next, we'll do the Hawkeyes. After that, we'll be Miss Marvel, and then we'll be done. So until then, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, all that, and I'll see you next time.